Hi guys, Katie here today and welcome back to the channel. So some of you may be thinking, hang on, you're not at the allotment. And it's true, we are in my kitchen. It is a very small kitchen, just to warn you. Um, but I have been talking all season long about what I am going to do with my produce. And we're coming to the end of the season now. I have been storing produce for about a week and a half, two weeks, some even longer in the freezer, all season. And now I finally have a whole weekend to do canning and preserving. So what I thought I'd do is a little mini series um, showing you what I'm doing with my produce, all the different recipes. Um, and so today is the first video. And today we are going to be making and canning caramelized onion jam with balsamic vinegar. We actually do have a recipe for that and it's over on the blog. I'll pop the link in the description below so you can go and get the recipe for yourselves. So as anyone who has watched my videos throughout the summer has seen my onions dramatically failed this year they they were a complete write-off they didn't do anything but i still really wanted to make onion jam because i love it my partner loves it it's great at christmas but it's also a really nice gift to give someone especially if you put it in some nice jars so I decided to go to my local market, met some amazing um, producers of the most fantastic vegetables and fruit and actually ended up buying quite a bit that I either hadn't grown myself this year or had failed, like my onions. They did me an amazing, amazing deal and I have somehow ended up with a 25 kilogram sack of onions. Um, they're not all going to go into the onion jam but I am going to at least double the recipe. The recipe I have says that it will take about seven half pints. It will make about seven half pints. Um, I have a lot of jars thankfully so I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be water bath canning them on my stove top. I did make sure that um, that the method I was using, the recipe I'm using, is completely safe for water bath canning so that the food will store really well. So enough chatting, let's get into it. So the first thing I need to do is get my canning pot on the stove, um, warming up and sterilizing my jars. So I don't have a proper canning pot. All I have is a giant stock pot that I have put a little rack in the bottom of so that the jars aren't on the bottom sorry about the lighting in here um and i fill that up and heat it up so just to show you this is my big pot and inside it i have put a rack which the jars sit on so we're going to get going i'm going to get that on and then i am going to start chopping the onions and they are going to be cooked in this pot so let's get going Okay, so my pot is on. I picked some jars, um, and the idea is is that um, I have picked several different kinds of jars um, because I want um, to have some just for home. So I'm using up some old jars, which aren't necessarily um, the prettiest, and then I have put some brand new jars in there so that if I do decide to give them as gifts, um, I will have some really, really nice pretty jars that I can put nice labels on and then um, I'll be able to give them as gifts at Christmas. Um, so I have just started chopping the onions, I weighed them out. I've also tried to be prepared in my kitchen. I have a little bag here for food waste so that I can then take that and compost it. I have a little bowl here to put all of my um, all of my onion slices in. So I did weigh them out with the skins and ends on but I did allow for the fact that I would be taking some off. So I did go slightly over the required amount just so that it allows for how much um, obviously we take off with the peel and the ends. I could already feel them getting to my eyes and this is the first one. So I'm now gonna start chopping. So I feel a bit disheveled after that. 
Um, I ended up going and getting my daughter's swimming goggles and putting them on because man alive, those onions were strong. Um, and I now have, let me have a look, let me bring it over. I now have a whole bowl, not getting too close, of these, um, which is approximately 3.6 kilos of onions, which means I've still got like over 20 kilos of onions left, but never mind. So I've got my big pot on here, um, which is heating up. I'm actually gonna take the lid off because I don't actually want it to boil. It's literally just heating up my jars. I'm doing what's called hot packing, where the jar is hot and the contents going in the jar are hot and it also helps bring the canner up to boil quicker and I use these they're just like canning tongs you grab the jar so you don't burn yourself so the next thing is I have to sweat down these onions I'm slightly concerned that the pot I'm cooking in isn't going to be big enough and it's my biggest one the onions are getting to me again so I'm going to put this on um, a medium heat and I have to add if I'm doubling the recipe let me check um, I actually printed it out to make it easier for myself so it says four tablespoons of olive oil and I have doubled the recipe so I'm gonna kind of eyeball it because I can't find my tablespoon measure but I do have a dessert spoon and I know it's a bit more than that so I need eight three four five six seven eight and a glug for luck right so I've got that on a medium heat already and I'm going to get as many onions in here as I possibly can, but they do sweat down. It's another reason I've doubled the recipe, because I want to make sure I have enough. So I'm going to get as many onions in here as I can, and I'm going to kind of try and separate them as I put them in, which I should probably have the goggles back on for. Does anyone else put goggles on when they're cutting onions, or does anyone have a tip for how not to let them get to you? I've tried the whole don't uh, breathe through your nose, only breathe through your mouth when I'm cooking onions. I actually did try the sucking the spoon one. None of it worked, but I swear putting my daughter's swim goggles on just got me through chopping over three and a half kilos of onions. They are super, super strong. Checking I'm not losing any. So I'm just gonna get these in here. And so what I'm meant to do now is put them in here on a medium high heat, um, only stir them occasionally. I'm gonna have to do it a little bit because otherwise I'm never gonna get all these onions in. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get about half of them in. So if I'd have done the normal recipe, I'd have been fine. Right, so I've got about half in and it says cook until golden about 10, 15 minutes. That's obviously gonna take slightly longer for me because I'm gonna to have to keep adding in and I may well add extra olive oil. But while these are cooking down, I'm going to measure out the next ingredients to go in, which are the granulated sugar and balsamic vinegar. So let's do that. So I have finally managed to sweat down all of my onions. There was quite a lot of liquid that came off them. So I have just been reducing that. I have a little bit of color on some of them, but then they were they were probably the ones that were in there the longest but i kept it fairly low and they're all soft and golden and they smell divine i'm having to really stop myself from just eating the cooked onions so now what i'm going to do is i measured out my sugar so i'm going to get this in here and i also measured out my balsamic vinegar and i'm going to get that in there so let's do that Okay, so I have been letting this reduce down and uh, getting all sticky. So the final step in the actual pre-cooking process is to add salt, pepper, and herbs. It says you can add anything that's kind of savory-ish. It says rosemary, thyme, or some mixed. So I went and had and added thyme to this. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt, which will also help get rid of the last bit of 
excess moisture in there we've got a really big huge pot i'm so excited so i did briefly turn my stock pot off um just because it was it was warming up a bit my canning pot it was warming up a bit uh quicker than my onion jam was reducing but i've got that back on so what i'm actually going to do now is um I am going to turn this off, turn the jam off, but leave it on the hob. I want it to stay warm, but I don't want it to be on the rolling boil that it is. So I'm going to leave this for five minutes or so, just to calm down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a jug and I'm going to start um, pouring it into my jars. Now, a lot of people, when they do canning, they use like a funnel. So I actually have a jam funnel and really weirdly, it doesn't fit any of the jars I have tried to use it with, which is really annoying. And I have got smaller jars that I'm doing today. So I'm going to use a jug and then I'm going to use a fork just to or a spoon just to kind of push some of the actual chunks of um, onion jam in just so that I'm not stuck with just a jar of like onion balsamic liquid okay so let's leave this for five minutes and then i will get my jars out and we will get filling so this is what my jam looks like there's still a fair bit of liquid but i'm gonna do something about that when i spoon it into these jars and I've got to move quick so let's do it Okay, so I've got my jars filled. I've got one, two, three, four large ones, one, two, three, four, five, six small ones, um, and half a one, which I'm actually just gonna put the lid on a fridge so I won't be canning it. Now it's really important when this lid, just be careful, because obviously it's very hot, but you need to wipe around the rims of all your jars, make sure there is no food or residue on them. I do this with kitchen towel and a bit of white vinegar just to clean them because if you don't, especially with this being sticky, um, if they if there's any chips in them, if in the rims of the jars, if there's any um, food residue, then it's highly likely that your canning process will fail and you won't get a seal and then yeah you've just kind of wasted all your time. So when I've put them in, I've left about a half inch of headspace at the top of the jar, just to allow for expansion and everything else. So all the rims are wiped down. I'm not so worried about the um, bottles themselves because stuff will come off them. So now you just have to really carefully, because um, obviously, as I said, they are really hot. So I took my canning lids out of the canner as well um, and you only have to do them up as tightly as you can and also just make sure that you put them on straight as well because I just realised that I'd put that one on the wrong way. Yes this is hot on my hands but needs must because at the end of this I'm going to have some amazing jars of onion jam which is very exciting so let's just make sure i've got all of these on and then all i am simply going to do 
do sorry about the noise dropping everything because it's so hot all i'm simply going to do now which also is a good test to check that you've um done them up properly is use my grippers to lift them back into the pan and get the lid on and get them to a rolling boil I also need to check while I'm doing this that A, I have enough water in my canning pot and B, that I don't have too much water because when we put them in earlier, obviously the jars were empty and they just kind of fill up the water so it was fine. But now these jars are all full of onion jam. So that means that the water level is going to go up and it does it does happen i would rather have more in there ready more water in there ready than i would um than i would too little and have to bring the pot up to temperature again i'm sorry you can't see my face at the moment i thought it was more important you actually watched the process and i know i keep dipping in and out of shot i think i think because obviously they've all got to be standing upright i am actually really grateful that I only had enough to half fill that last pot and I'm keeping it out because I wouldn't have actually gotten it in. But I have just enough space to get those in. Right, quickly, lid on. Okay, turn this back up to full. So, I have just hot packed, which means that the jar is hot and the contents of the... Um, of the, what's going in the jar is hot, the onion jam. I did take, I did leave it for five minutes so that it wasn't bubbling and broiling anymore. But as you heard from my oohs and ahs, it was still quite hot. Um, so what I have done is loaded them in. That is done. Uh, I've lifted them, submerged them. I'm just checking um, the processing time. Okay, so I now have to bring this up to a rolling boil. Once I notice that it's at a rolling boil, which is not actually far away from, I have to process it for 10 minutes. However, processing also depends on your altitude wherever you live. If you live between 0 to 1,000 feet altitude, your processing time is only 10 minutes. However, you have to add an additional minute for every additional 1,000 feet of elevation. Luckily, I checked mine. I'm only for 10 minutes. So I'm going to let this go for a rolling boil for 10 minutes. Then what I do after 10 minutes is I remove the lid, turn off the hob, and just let them sit for five minutes. And then I take them out and we leave them to cool and pop. Let's wait and see what happens. Okay, that's it. My timer went off about five minutes ago. So I just took it off the hob so that they could come down a little bit in temperature. And it's now time to get them out. You won't really know if you've failed to can for a little while yet, but I can see all the air bubbles rising. Don't worry if, as they cool and dry, you get a somewhat whitish powdery residue on your jars. That's actually just down to the water um, and it can just be wiped off afterwards. So I will get all of these out and they are basically just going to sit on the side until they are completely cooled. I will wipe them down and I will label them. In the next hour or so, what I should find is that I start hearing the popping of jar lids, which will be amazing. Um, you won't necessarily notice or hear all of them, but what you can do is that once they're cooled, just press down in the middle of the jar. How cute are these? Look! <laughs> Just press down in the middle of the jar and you should get that you have a completely concave uh, lid that does not pop or anything. You know, like that normal... Oh! <laughs> and it just did it for the camera. Did you hear that? That was one of the jars popping. That's amazing. So I know that I've got at least one success, which is always a bonus. These are a bit close to the side of the pan, so I just need to move them out slightly so I can get them out. 
I can see all the air bubbles calming up, coming up and rising. It's such a rich, dark colour. I just know that that is going to be fantastic with cheese and crackers one night. Okay. So there you have it. That is our first experience together in the kitchen which is just incredible thank you so much for watching don't forget i have put the recipe down in the description below and stick around because i'm planning on doing a lot more of these if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like hit that subscribe button and you'll get notifications when all our videos are out thanks so much for joining me and i'll see you next time bye everyone